GB record starts 2014. Um, AR-15 happens. You have some music coming out. And then, I won't say things go quiet, but there's a, there's a rebuilding phase. What, 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 what made that, what brought that about? And what was really happening behind the scenes? I just feel like, you know, when I was doing the music, we, I just come from the streets. Um, I didn't understand the music industry and how to deal with the music and the streets. And I was carrying a lot of niggas from the streets. And there's just lots of bullshit started happening and lots of this and that. When so much people are trying to do one thing, things can get a bit wishy-washy, you get me? Um, so I think it just got to a stage where things weren't really working out, you know, like it was pushing me as an artist, there was a few other artists and things weren't working out and the manage the management, um, Bones, Father Blue, he done a good job with me in the beginning. You know, I won't take that away from him. Um, he, 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 he actually believed in me and gave me the belief and confidence to be an artist or a rapper, but he didn't have the, 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 the wits to take what we was trying to do to another level, you know? Um, and I feel like things just got a bit messy. There was a lot of bullshit going on. So I had to shut everything down, destroy and rebuild. So, you know, like, um, I realised there's going to be a next generation. M. Dot and Shulky was coming through. Them little kids was messaging me from when they was like 13. And I wasn't taking them seriously them times. And then um, when, when M. Dot died, that was when I was thinking, fucking hell, like, I could, should have took them youths on and kind of shielded them and pushed them forward. So the artists that was popping in the area, I kind of just put them on straight away and started to do that. So um, before Disney, I signed the ARs. There was a group of youths, there were the ARs, but there was gang, you get me? There were gang members. And I was trying to take them away from the gang business and push them into the music industry because they was talented. You get me? And they were, it just kind of just went all pear-shaped. Like, they was really ra- doing what they was rapping about, and it caught up with them. And that hurt me a lot, because they was in a place where I was coming from, and I understood it, and I was trying to get them away from it. But these youth of today, they don't listen. They don't listen to no one, you know what I mean? And because I'm from that, when bad things happen in that space, so much people make up things and start talking so much shit and you know there's so much bullshit you have to deal with when managing gang members or signing gang members as a record label especially if you're from that so people attach you to it straight away when really you're just trying to do something different so that happened they started blowing they put a couple tunes out and they was blowing but fast forward they got wrapped up went to jail so then i signed diz which is my family so she was doing like some little freestyles and I said, Rah, you're actually hard. And I was saying to Chunks, Rah, like, don't you think she's hard? And he's like, Rah. So we put her on straight away, put a video out, she started blowing. But again, people got into her ears and, you know, like she got gassed up with the buzz she had and didn't really concentrate on the music. And then like, you know, like all the love that she was getting, she thought it was real. And then, you know, like when the music faded, all the love that she was getting, they turned their backs on. So she knows what's real, but she 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 lived that. There's then Defundo come through. Diz brought Defundo through. He they done a Westwood. It just went off straight away. I signed Defundo. We put out a song. That went off. <clears throat> um, he wasn't able to follow up that song so much and keep the music at that level. But you know, Defundo is really talented, and I think. He'll, he'll find his lane back. And same like this, Tizanos and Isong, they come along a little bit after that, but they was like 13, 14. And I've had them since then, so they was waiting and watching these lot do their thing, but always had them in the studio, building them up, developing them. But when I heard them two kids, I said, these two kids are crazy. When I heard Tizanos rap, she used to go by the name of Tyler. I said, this little, can anyone hear what I hear? This little girl. <laughs> She's been hard then. Obviously not as she, she's always developing, but she's been crazy then. I was fascinated with her from then. I song. I was as, I was fascinated with him. He was singing on the piano, playing the piano and singing. I was like, what the fuck? This is talent. 
So I said, Ro, come, come. It's been like four years and now they're starting to, you know, gain a momentum and this is what it takes in the music business. This music business is serious. Like a lot of people think, oh, you're just going to come in. Like us back in the day, you're going to come in, make two tunes, two videos, couple chains, kettles, whips, models, boom, we're going to blow. It's not like that. You know, like you can get all the attention, but the music has to be there. Bro, you know, I, I, I hear that is like, I think from our generation, our age group, bro, like you actually have to develop an artist development. And that's like, you wouldn't get four years, four or five years at, on a label mm -hmm. to just develop and yeah. have someone just invest in you. And that, and that just hearing that story, bro, like you hear it a lot that artists, like people get into their ears. They think they've arrived. They think it's permanent. As soon as you start, as soon as it's not that, them calls don't get answered, those texts don't get replied. Those it's not real, the industry, it's not real. When you're hot, everyone's on your nuts. Like, a message that I'll say to people coming into the music industry, like, come in, build your relation, do what you think, but don't think it's all real. Keep it real with your ones that's really around you, that was with you before the music industry, because a lot of people come in and forget where they're coming from. They think, oh yeah, I'm patterning with this rapper, I'm with that guy. Mm. They start dealing with their friends like cunts, you get me? Mm. So I'll just say, yeah, like, and with Diz, she was family. So even though she got gassed up and like, you know, but she was family and I understood what she was going through because she was young and we could work it out, you know, and she's still here and she, she helps a lot with the label and with what I do, you know. Me and her clash, but like, you know, such is life. When um you said with the other guys, <laughs> who you said like, um you tried to, I forgot the names you said, the I think the, the guys who... Before? Yeah. Um, Father Blue, a couple other dudes, you get me? Bro, what is, I mean, like, we, it's hard, because, like, I see, see, it's not in my position, but it's not they don't listen, bro, they just don't, they don't follow up what, they hear, they just don't do what they're You know what told. it is, yeah? A lot of people come into the music industry, and they don't really want to be musicians. Mm, yeah, and like real musicians, yeah, that you're seeing of today have been fucking making music for like 20 years, 10, 20 years. Like real musicians are in it forever. If you're in this music team and you're a real musician, you're meant to be in this for life. A lot of men just think, oh, we're gonna come here, like I say, no, oh, two videos, two holes, duh, 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 duh. and like their heart's not really in it, you know, because. Whether I'm in a in a in a fraternity with people or not, I'm gonna still be doing music, you know. And this is what I'm doing because I'm running this thing by myself. Before it was a team, I'm doing this by myself. I'm signing these artists by myself. I'm pushing them myself. I've got staff. I've got people working, but I make all the decisions. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. And I just feel like people that I was with before wasn't serious. When you when you had the when you had the re, re, rebuilding <coughs> phase. Like, was it difficult for you? Because I think you said, like, you know, I mean, your manager at that time got you to a certain level, but when you start to feel like, mm, like, is that a difficult conversation to have? Is it ego? Is it pride? How does that, like, resolve itself? With what? What do you mean? You said, you said that when you, when you had the first rebuild, yeah. you had to kind of, like, change the team. You had to, like, destroy it. Like, yeah. Everyone was somewhat affiliated at that point. Was it... It, must it have been created a, a lot of hate. When I kind of, when they destroyed, there was a lot of people that I was affiliated with. Um through the music that it created like a big bag of hate and just so much bullshit. Like it was, it was really nasty when I first started off on my own and you know, like people talking so much shit, but you just got to crack on mm -hmm. and leave that where it is. Yeah. So, and cause we're all local, everyone's in our business locally and it's just, it was a bit of a mess, but it was a good thing. I just left that where that is and just cracking on. Randomly, how, wait, this is just, <coughs> how, how proud are you of like, DV and what they've what they've achieved. See, for instance, when Ads and LB and them was put, making music, no one weren't trying to listen to their music. No one didn't give a fuck about them. I was I was bringing their music into BBC and playing it to DJs and people, and they weren't trying to hear their shit. Do you know what I mean? Them lot was working hard as well. Was it some of those old? We'll talk about this on the phone. I think those those first, those videos when um. Was it Jada and them guys were coming down? Like, were you, you were around that? Yeah, them look, they were working. Um, they brought Jada, we made them shoot a video in the hood. I brought them to the hood, shot a video on the block, got the hood out. Them lot have been working, been rapping. You know, it, was, it took a long time for them to pick up momentum and get to where 
the, into the position they are in now. And um, I feel like artists, I even told my artists, like, artists coming through, you want to be like D Block. And I don't mean, oh, you, you need to make music like D Block or the, the, the style like them. I mean, like, you need to have a business mind like them. Because they've come through the game strong, they're still independent. They're selling all these records, they're charting. They're doing more than what signed artists are doing. And artists coming up, they're what you need to be like, you know? You don't need to sound like them because everyone's trying to fucking sound like them. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, have your own sound. But if you're looking at artists in the game, D Block Europe, then that's not me being biased because they're my cousins or whatever. Like, they're artists that you want to be like. Do you know what's interesting though? Like, <coughs> remember when they used to always shoot their videos in their apartments? Yeah. Everyone was like trying to find an apartment <laughs> to shoot a video to look like D Block. And that's the thing in the UK. People put themselves in a box here and people don't try to think out of the box. Everyone wants to just do what everyone else is doing. No one wants to take the risk and be themselves, you know? Yeah, that's interesting. But those times there, like, did you, did you see that, did you see it within them that they could, like, really, I guess we never knew what the successes would look like nowadays because the industry wasn't like that then, but did you always think that they had a, a good shot? Yeah, Ads, Ads has always been mad. Since he's a kid, isn't it? Since he's a kid. Look, the it? little guy, the little nigga can rap, you get me? The little homie can rap, you get me? Like, he's doing this singing thing now and, like, you know, but like, if he wants to turn it, turn it around and rap, he can rap. And he was hard then, as he is now. You know, the ones there. So, I could see like the, the manager, my cousin. We used to sit down in my house and plan to come into this music industry. You know, and yeah, it's good to see where where they where they've come from and where they 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 are now. You know, you, c- you can't have no hate for them t- from where they're coming from. You can't. That's also inspiration. Like, that's actually family, that like, yeah, real, real, yeah. like blood and that. It's crazy, man. And they're, they're, they're like, <coughs> I think they're in the next ten years. People are gonna look at them as they really did change the game. They changed the game. Yeah. They changed the game because no, as I said, no one was trying to listen to their shit. No one went hearing their shit. Mm. They was trying to get features with some of these suckers that they're featuring with now. They weren't hearing them. They weren't mm. trying to show them love. As soon as these men are popping now, everyone's their mates. You get me? And that's the music industry. <laughs> It's another segue. Like, what do you like? What do you think of like the platforms we do have now? Um, in general, I'll say like podcasts, websites, because um, it feels like everyone's a. I don't know. It feels like everyone's doing the same thing now. Do you get what I mean? Like, as 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 a, as a you know, a guy from the streets, whatever. When you see like, I don't know how. You I know what? Know, how do you think the culture's being represented? I see concept? a lot of idiots here. Yeah? I see a lot of idiots on podcasts on YouTube, on Instagram, talking about the streets and acting like they're of the streets and acting like, you know, you get a lot of these reformed guys that act like, oh, like, you know, like, I'm a changed man. You was never successful in the streets, bro. You was never getting money. You was never a boss. You was a tramp. You was broke. Like, you shouldn't be talking of that and trying to explain that when you don't know that. Then I see a lot of people licking out on the little youths them that are making drill music. And, like, people shouldn't be talking about stuff that they're not from or not of or that they don't understand. And it's difficult for the little youths coming through. I know I just went somewhere else, but... The little youths, you know, like, when you're 16, 17 and in gang wars and da-da-da, you can't see past that, you know? So a lot of people are just talking shit about these kids and the music they're making, but they're not giving them time or they're not trying to understand them. I just think all... Some of the stuff is positive. Some of the post- podcasts are positive, but a lot, a lot of people just out there just talking shit. Like it's just gossip. People are on there talking shit. Gala chatting shit. Everyone's just chatting shit. Because what I'm trying to get to is like what you're doing, and even what you just mentioned with T Sanders and uh, <coughs> I songs is that you've actually taken. I'm not saying they were in the streets, like, but you've yeah. taken two kids, and you've developed them for like four or five years. But I don't. If you and I didn't speak, bro, I wouldn't know, know that that's that. even something that's even happened, which I'm trying to say, like, you are actually creating a change in the narrative and trying to take people well, off of that. Zandos, yeah. I see a lot of people saying that she is capping in her rapping and people just judging the book by a cut. If she wasn't fucking making music, she would be in jail or doing some other mad shit. Like, that little kid was crazy when she was a kid, you know? Like, 
there's some things she used to do. I was thinking, well, what the hell is wrong with this kid? If she wasn't making music, she would be banging trouble. Do you know what I mean? I song, he's always been a good you. Mm-hmm. He's always been a good you. You know, like he always took his art seriously, and he's, he's you know, he's. He, I don't think he'll be involved in the roles or anything like that. You get me? But like T Zandos, I know that she, that kid, if she wasn't making music, she'll be in trouble. Mm-hmm. So keeping her away from that. Even when she's doing music, I have to get onto her and make her understand she's an artist. And t- do you know what I mean? Like, it's, but that people just judge the book by the cover and make up assumptions because she's a little girl. That you know, like a little innocent looking girl. All the rapping she's saying it can't be true. Like she's just chatting shit. She's realer than most of these dickhead fucking rappers out of it. <laughs> you get me? <laughs> hey, nah, it's crazy. She's got a bright future though. Everyone's tipping her to do create. Like she's so talented, bro. So talented. And at that age, like, like a lot of people look at her as being the next up. I think if it wasn't COVID, like this year, bro, she'll be doing a lot of shows, PAs. But she's still got time on her hands though. She's still young though. Yeah, she's 18. I song's 18 as well. They've both got a lot of time. And I'm, for me, it's amazing to see. No, because I've never done nothing like this in my life. I've never even stuck out. The only thing I stuck out was the road. Mm-hmm. And obviously, like, I elevated in that, but, like, I never stuck out something else in life to see where it could go and how fruitful it can be. Mm-hmm. And to see T. Zandos blossom and, and I song and where they're going with their music, like, the music they're making now, you know, and, like, the relationship that we have, you know, it's amazing. And it's the same with Diz and Defundle, you know, like from where they're coming from and where they're going, the music that they're making, how they're developing as artists. It's amazing to see that, you know, and a lot of people in, give up. There's loads of times me as a as a um, label executive or owner or whatever you want to call it and a rapper, there's loads of times I say, you know what, this is long. I'm spending all of this money people chatting shit this is long I just want to throw this in the bin and get back to what I'm doing but I've had mentors around me that have told me look what you're doing is amazing everyone can't see what you're doing because you're not on the line online going on about it every minute but like what you're doing is amazing what you've created is amazing so you could never like think about throwing this in the bin and like you know I'm past that nothing in the world could stop me from doing what I'm doing now and what I'm doing with the artists but it does, it does. I think even like me having my own platform, bro, I've had my platform for 10 years, bro. <coughs> and bro, you have your days, bro. We're human beings, bro. You have your days and you're just like, you question you question it, but you know, you have belief that it, it will come to pass. Do you get what I mean? But I'm just even thinking that, and I think the key word, what you said, bro, is that you're an executive. <laughs> we don't have many executives. We have a lot of rappers, a lot of managers, but an executive is really looking at how to scale this business, like really like, it's not just being, it's a real, it's P&Ls, accountants, this and that. Everything. Bro, payroll, like, are we VAT? Bro, there's a lot. And when you haven't had, quote unquote, the university experience or gone through the most smooth paths, it's even more intense, bro, because it's just literally just, it's self-taught to an extent. Do you know what I mean? Well, I'll just say to anyone that is coming in the music business that, you know, is from where I'm from and not really book smart or whatever, you know, like, Everything looks so complicated, but it's not. It looks more complicated than it is. You just got to deal with everything like publishing, PRS and PPO and all of that. Like, I wasn't taking none of that seriously. Like, we lost so much money with that stuff, but that's just not me not sitting down and then going through things. And then the management that I had in the past, they weren't dealing with that properly. So, you know, but, you know, that is a thing you need to take. A, you need to take the music business as serious as the music that you're putting out. Otherwise, you're going to lose out on so much money. Yeah, and people ain't going to really tell you, like, oh, there's money on the table that you no, can be getting. you need to take the music business even more serious than the music you're putting out. Obviously, the music that you're putting out is going to create the business for you, but you need to take that business serious because you're going to lose out on a lot of money. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Bro, when, look, when I listen to your music, let me actually talk to you, like, how I listen to your music. It's always... It's always boss level talk. Do you understand? And I won't, I won't say it's not believable, but do you think people... Can anyone pour me out some of that water? Yeah. Oh, I can get you a bottle. Yeah, just get me a bottle. Thanks. 
Thank you. So, bro, I was saying, um, a lot of your your music's very descriptive. Um, it's definitely it definitely tells a story of a of a past experience, if that makes sense. Do you do you ever do you ever find that people doubt your authenticity? Maybe I don't know if they will even say it to you, but I don't know because we don't have we don't have too many people who can speak how you speak in the mm -hmm. music. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. You yeah, know? I think um, it's, it's it's simple, isn't it? Like in this music industry, you rap, you make music, and the stuff you talk about. We're from like England's a small place. It's not like America. Like there's a state there and a state there. Mm -hmm. Like you can ring someone. If I hear a rapper from Birmingham, I can ring my, my G's up there and say, "Yo, you know about this rapper? What's he about?" Like you know, your your credit, your, your 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 credibility speaks for itself. So everyone knows what I'm about, you know. Like, pff, no one it can't doubt my authenticity, you know. Like, pff, people can't. There's not many rappers that can talk about the shit I talk about, you know. Pff, yeah. And with your projects, have you got um are your features? Or is it just you on a project? You got features on there? I got features. Can you speak on that yet, or um, you don't yeah, keep it? Yeah, um, Snap Capone's on there. Um, Big up. That's snaps. normal. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Expecting that. Um, Deep Green. Mm -hmm. I fuck with Deep Green shit. It's got like yeah. an old um, school hip hop kind of style going on that I fuck mm -hmm. with heavy. Um, stardom. What they got Stardom, yeah. Snap Capone, Stardom, Deep Green. And my artist. Who else is on that project? That's about it, isn't it? Who else is on there? Huh? Huh? Oh, no, that's on the, um, the other project. Like, I've got a few. Features on the other project. You sure like Snap ain't one of the A&Rs, bro? If he, if he knows about <laughs> the music like this, man. Hey, Snap, man. Come on, bro. Um, majority of the production on that's produced by Wizzy Wow. Oh, Wizzy Wow. Cool. Other yeah. productions and Prince. I see you, People I see, see Prince around um, D-Block. Yeah. And um, there's another oh, guy Prince, called Raz. Yeah. Um, Rizal, he calls himself. I've been working with a, a lot as well. Um, so, because I've known Wiz for a little while. but Because I see, like, what, what's that relationship then? Is he... Is he is he part of the team or? I uh, mean, he's got a good relationship. Yeah. Me and Wizard's got a really good relationship, you know, and um, I went and started recording with him at a time where I needed to kind of just be in my own space and like musicians will know like when you're recording, it's like therapy. So he's it's, like, talented, that boy, so like even very for talented. Art, like just he's, yeah. So he, he, you know, with recording with him, he made me dig deeper into a space in my mind where I'd never usually go, you know? So um, recording with him, it was like therapy. I'll go there and I'll record and I'll make songs and I'll talk about the past and it's just, it's like therapy. And Wiz, Wiz brought, he, he brought a lot out of me in there. And I'm aware that quite a lot of, like I said earlier before, a lot of artists, a lot of labels are sniffing at some of your artists. And I do think this is the year, and it's not because it's 2021, but I think one of them's definitely gonna go, like definitely gonna have a, a, a stellar year, whether that's through GB or whether you upstream it to a major, if that makes sense. But God willing, that p comes to pass. Yeah, how how proud would you be to see that? You know, with all the and words couldn't explain. Words couldn't explain um, how happy or I'll be to see. You know, I'm 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 happy now <laughs> to see where these artists are. You know, because I've saw saw that in them and like you know people couldn't see it then and like people are seeing it now four years later so i just you know like all my artists i just wanted them to be able to be in a different space you know like just create music and be happy and be in a space where they don't have to think about other things or live that kind of life you know but you know, like with what we have been and what I represent, I don't want the artists or people that are under me to go through that. I don't think they need to because I've got the brain power to to guide them, you know. And it's just about having the knowledge and the mindset. A lot of people ain't got the right mindset. No, I hear that, man. And I think it's true, bro. It's like, I think <coughs> what they say, what they will say is like, bro, when you come from, I won't say a traumatic place, but you come from a hard experience, you don't want to burden other people sometimes with what you've had to deal with. Do you know what I mean? And you really touched on the fact that some people support your artists and when they know you're behind it, they may want to shy away. So you don't want to almost reinforce mm. the reason why they may have those things. But um, any advice you have for, 
it sounds cliche, artists who are trying to go into the music industry because I think patience is, is, is patience and dedication is a key thing that they need to have. It all boils at the end of the day. It all boils down to the music, yeah. So, a lot of man from the street come into the music industry and think, oh, like, I need to have a chain. I need to have a watch. I need to be showing and this and that. Yeah, you need to be real. A lot of guys make it that ain't real because of the music. But you do need to be real and credibility lasts a long way in the music industry. But that's that's another conversation. Mm-hmm. I'll just say, coming in the music industry, you have to, it boils down to the music. Make sure you're, you're making good music and you're patient and you're ready to be here for like 10, 20 years. You're not thinking, oh, you're just going to put these songs out and blow straight away, you're going to have to work consistently. And the money don't come that fast, you know, it takes time. Bro. And it does, a lot, a lot of, the music industry is built to make a broke person coming in that you need money. You don't need money to blow in the music industry. You just need faith and the belief, you know. The money will come. I know you're a fan of Dipset, right? Yeah. I remember Jim Jones said a long time ago, he said, they'll make you famous before they make you rich. Mm. And when you look at like just how a lot of these things are structured, you think you'll make, you think you got money, but it's always cliche. It's just a loan, and it don't last forever. Do you know what I mean? So you have to really just be like, are you an artist, or you just want to get girls in? Like, because the materialism has nothing to do with the actual music. No. Like, when you're in the studio, can you create? Can you touch people? Like even seeing like, I've checked like, a lot of Snap's music from back in the day. Like, he's been hard. Do you know what I mean? And it's like things like that. You have to, if you're not put, if you're not making music, I can't be a fan if it's just like one song every two, three years or one. Like me as a rapper, I was blessed when I come in that I had friends, friends like Snap Capone, I had rappers around me like Chunks. You know, like I was looking back at me now, I wasn't a great rapper, but these men were veteran rappers and they believed in me. I could see where I go, and you know. I was amongst some of the dopest rappers in the UK and I had to up my game fast, you know, and, you know, like the, the way I rap now is on a total different level to, to what it was then. You can see the improvements. Mate, I'm a total different guy, total <laughs> different person. Yeah. And with a new project, do you feel like you've, obviously you spoke about Wizzy Wow's um, influence on getting things out. What, what just to summarise, what are we expecting from your project? From my project, um, it's me rapping about my past yeah um you know like when i was in the thick of the streets and involved in the streets you know like i'm not the music the, the music i've been making is about like now whatever but I'm not putting that out for now so the music from the project is just about the cause of the streets you know the honor of the streets and just about all of that really yeah, I think that's kind of got washed up in society yeah. nowadays. People don't really know like what's what the line. They don't around. like you. I see this post the other day that like it's like you know the memes that everyone's making. It said, "Oh, my man's a rat." Oh, yeah, and it says, "Oh, like he's he's mashing. Oh, let's go get the band." Oh, and that's that's sums up the game right now. The streets, the music mm-hmm. industry, everything. Like you, looking at the game, you can't see what's real, what's fake, and the the viewers and the the, the listeners they can't see what's real and what's fake. So you just got to kind of just stay in your own lane and just create your own space. All right, cool, my bro. I'm going to leave it there, man, because I know the project's going to come out. I need to take it in. I need to take it in. What's it called? Omerta? Omerta. Omerta. The Code of Silence. Code of Silence. So, yeah, that was just like, you know, that's what we represent. Coming mm-hmm. from the streets, that's what we represent, the Code of Silence. We don't believe in talking to the police. You know, if you're coming from that space or you're representing that space... You shouldn't be talking to the police and when things go wrong for you, you shouldn't be talking to them at, at no given time, you know, and that's what we represent. And if you get bagged, you just accept your charge? Just accept your charges.